that played an important role in in world war 2 that's called fascism okay the template for fascism was given by mussolini and followed by hitler so in a way mussolini is a teacher and trend setter to hitler mussolini showed the direction but hitler perfected it hitler was far more successful in creating a fascist state uh this fascist state is also called a totalitarian state totalitarianism refers to totality of all aspects of the society all aspects of life are controlled by the state there is no separation between private life and public life so it is a complete control fascism or totalitarianism come under rule by one dictator okay this dictatorship is not simply personal but there is an ideology okay so it is not usual autocracy it is autocracy combined with ideology with uh, complete control over various aspects of social life okay uh it started first in italy italy like uh, germany was a relatively recent nation for example italy in 189 1815 was like this okay there were kingdoms kingdoms and uh, some city states and italians spread in many political entities remember kingdom or an empire they refer to controlled by uh, i mean unif they are unified in the sense that they have one army a state is something that is that is controlled and one army kingdom also is like that people don't have a sense of belonging when people have a sense of belonging you call it nation okay so such italy as a nation was created by 1870 as a result of unification of various kingdoms 1870 okay it was soon after that germany also was created so what is common to italy and germany is that they are newly unified and new nations okay so people have a sense of uh, unity homogeneity uh, sense of oneness all these things okay some people think this is a source of strength being one one group okay italians germans okay so it appears fascism requires some of these conditions so a sense of unity we italians okay 
so it was it and uh, next um so we are new and some idea we have a destiny we have a destiny uh, to fulfill destiny to fulfill and uh, our past is great you know italy's past was roman empire it was a great empire past is great and maybe we can regain the glory regain the glory okay if only we act united as one under one leader okay so uh, uh being one united as one um, becoming stronger okay and uh, some destiny to fulfill the word fascism comes from this this is an italian word in ancient rome the faces was a bundle of rods with an axe head it is it is this this is bundle of bundle of rods with an axe head bundle of rod with an axe head so why this bundle of rods bundle of rods is stronger than any rod okay it can be bundle of rods or bundle of wood so individual is being fused individuals are becoming one okay and with a force with a force so one can say it is a loss of individuality so all people become one with a purpose so this symbolizes power power which individuals as individuals do not have but which as a group have okay this was carried by leaders okay so um, so fascism refers to becoming one merging and uh, destiny the goal okay and what happened in italy the man responsible for fascism is uh mussolini mussolini okay just one second okay you just tell me what you have understood from this first of all do you understand the ideal is is there a problem with the ideal or is that clear to you or acceptable or sensible hmm? it is clear sir what do you say karam karim you you it is clear to you but is it acceptable uh, like fascism sir hmm. no what becoming one bundle of rods becoming one with an axe head should a society yes. 
Hmm? Unity, it states, it symbolizes unity. Hmm. It brings unity. Thanks. Okay. Deepika, what do you say? You can think, please. Hmm. You can think and respond. Preferably switch on the videos. Hmm. Deepika, you tell me. Yes, sir, I missed some initial part. Uh, okay. I mean, I got disconnected in between. Okay. Okay. Shali? So, no, so one query. Huh. So what will the ads symbolize? It is just for usability for war or something or else something else? It, it will... was used for a control, law and order. Used by control. Okay. But maybe we can say it is for power or purpose. But essentially in unity is the strength. What do you say, Sunil? Is it obvious or is it, uh, is it controversial? Should this be acceptable to everybody or you think there may be a problem with this approach? There is a problem. There is a problem. Hmm? Individuality is lost. Flexibility is lost. Individuality is lost. Flexibility is lost. Hmm. They cannot... So do you want to be a part of that bundle or do you want to be an individual rod? Individual rod. Individual rod. Okay. So, hmm. so Rajan, you want to say something? Uh, it may be obvious choice because uh, it is newly from a state. And, uh, it brings in? Hmm? Maybe it is obvious choice because it is new, newly from a state. It is not an obvious choice. No, it is obvious choice, I think so. It is an obvious choice. Yes, sir. Why are you saying it is obvious? You mean it should be good? Is it is right? No, I am not saying it is right, but uh, mm. uh, it is newly found. They want to protect it from other states. Maybe people will accept it. No, I am asking you, is that a good idea? It's not a good idea, sir. Why do you think it is a good idea or why do you think it is not a good idea? Loss of individuality is never a good idea, sir. Okay, that's what you are saying. Okay. The audio but not it clear. is a newly formal hmm? Loss newly of formal individuality state. is not a good idea. Yes, sir. Hmm. Why? Because uh, to, uh, freedom to pursue anything is not freedom to pursue oneself is not there. Hmm. But it promotes unity, right? All become one. At the cost of individuality. Okay. If both the are cost present, of... then it's a good state. Hmm? Hmm? If both are present, then it, it would be a good state. Sir. Okay. You mean to say they should be able to come together, but one should not lose. Yes. What do you say, Case? Uh, sir, hmm. sir, I, sir, I'm, I'm actually have doubt regarding the faces. Uh, there is an axe on that. So hmm. there is a. Uh, is it a symbol for law and order, like an axe? Exactly. It is a symbol order. of law and order. Yes, symbol of power, law and order. Yes, sir. sir, but also there can be two uh, two concepts, sir. One is that a majoritarian uh, establishment mm. or a consensus-based, democratically cons arrived consensus-based establishment. So Okay, I'm let not... all people be one. You mean to say all the people, if they are willing to be a part of the bundle, then it is it is not wrong? Yes, sir, then it is not wrong. Mm -hmm. But if only few bund few rods are bundled together and uh, mm -hmm. projected as a strong force, mm -hmm. then I think uh, that is that why is wrong. that is why the majority of rods will say others should adjust. Okay. Because if unity is important, don't you think uh, minority should change?
yes they will be they will be compelled to be part of the hmm. but they will be compelled to so leave the minority part so is it good for the for the one group say italians suppose it is homogeneous is it for homogeneous group is it good to be like that yes sir a homogeneous group should be like that and the whole world should move like that society should move that leave way. the leave the world leave think of one country why should all the people uh, be a bundle why should they be one sir like they should all have some uh, all should be part of a common goal of uh, societal development but why should in the public life public why should individuals have a different goal for example ks you refuse to clear the exam voluntarily shouldn't you be allowed to refuse yes sir i should be allowed but uh, there is both personal life as well as a public life but like, in this rod there is nothing like that you are you are a part of a um, bundle for the totality you have to uh, totality sets a goal and you have to be that you can't say i would love to fail if you fail you are uh, bringing back the nation bringing down the nation okay so that is severe uh, suppression of personal freedom uh, isn't it so personal choice yes first tell me do you want to be given a freedom to Uh, to refuse to run to refuse to excel to refuse to participate in a rat race yes sir wish everyone should have the freedom yes uh, we should have the and what is this bundle supposed to do that is another issue so what is this uh... sir i think that that will be decided by the individual leader he told that under one leader why uh, should it under one leader? leader leader decide everybody for everybody sir uh, this imagine the opposition has like in the modern indian history we have uh, uh, after aurangzeb every, everybody dismantled until aurangzeb no, no, he no. Leave, held all of them like a... leave examples we just think about it conceptually one leader will decide if not leader majority decides but why should individuals lose and why do we think that is a good society i mean that is an issue right i mean do you agree at least that is an issue it is an issue but it has its own advantage what is the advantage when the time comes where they are together hmm when the time when there is a need they are together that is true when the time comes they are together is different from always together and the when this so, this is like society becoming one always together concept it is not that in a crisis you respond it is that always you have to be because we are we are on the march we have to go we are moving in this direction and so let us be together it is like that not a response to crisis but changing the society not responding to a crisis thinking that the society should be like this man is born in this and will die in it as a part of the bundle
Okay. Now come to it. Uh, so the individual kingdoms will not have a chance by at least by mutual understanding or something to be in a to kingdom. Be in a kingdom, people are not one. Sense of belonging and things like that don't emerge. It is just one law and order system. Individual loyalty. So nation is different from kingdom. Okay. Okay. Now come to Italy. Okay, under what circumstances uh, people will find that coming together and becoming a bundle is a goal, is an ideal. Okay, uh, it appears. Okay, uh, it appears people come to uh, may come to certain kind of situations when they perceive collective hurt and uh, collective problem okay and then somebody comes okay and let us go to the specifics of italy okay mussolini he was a socialist. He was once a socialist and editor of a socialist magazine. And you know, socialism opposes all wars. So he was opposing all wars as in Marxist ideology. But he was kicked out of a socialist party when he campaigned for participation of Italy in World War I. Okay. Then after that, he volunteered to join in War I and you got wounded and came out in 1970. So this was his World War I experience. Mm -hmm. After World War I, what was the mood of Italy? People were hurt by peace treaty as in the case of Germany. Difference here is Italy was on the winning side. Germany was on the losing side. So Versailles, Versailles Treaty was unfair to Germany, but Italy felt though it won, it did not get what it wanted. For example, it wanted uh, borders to be settled as per nationalities as promised by Woodrow Wilson, but it did not happen. So though on the winning side, it had certain grievances and some classes were fearing Bolshevism that happened in Russia and lower classes were having problems and there is a resentment of the government because of many problems of unemployment. Okay, so out of this unrest, uh, Mussolini created around 1922, black shirted squads, uniformed. They were found in every Italian town. And what do these black shirts do? They attack their opponents. Okay, but what do these people stand for? stand for um, greater glory of Italy, okay? And uh, uh, he was making, uh, Mussolini was making different promises across the classes. He wanted to come to power and he created lawlessness. He created a band of loyalists. Uh, it was in this context 
the uh, one weak king at the time, King Victor Emmanuel III, was induced to appoint him as a premier in 1922. Okay. Um, because there were no clear alternatives and so uh, king made him premier. Um, he struck a, a deal with the king and others, but uh, he didn't want to be given as a gift by the king. So he organized this his group of 30,000 uh, to come to march in what was termed march on Rome. March on Rome as if that they came to, they came to march to take over power by force, but it didn't happen like that. And later these people would claim 3 lakh people made a march, though it was actually only 30,000. So that was how Mussolini came to power. Mussolini came to power. And now what does he do with the power? He ruled legally for two years, no problem. And then he rigged 1924 elections. And because of which fascists became majority in parliamentary votes. And then his group will create trouble to the opponents, all kinds of problems. And finally, those parties would uh, close themselves. And finally, uh, where, where all, other, all other parties were forced out and he created a one-party state by 1926. Okay. And then he called himself A leader, do say. He's called a great leader. And then he created a dictatorship with his fan following, with slogans like this Mussolini is always right. Believe, obey, and fight. Better to live one day as a lion than a hundred years like a sheep. A minute on the battlefield is worth a lifetime of peace. Nothing has ever been won in history without bloodshed. So mobilizing the army, the people for a war to create a great empire, to go back to those ancient days. Okay. So a tough government with complete control, with censorship, with no political parties, army under his control, media under his control, came. But what were the elements of this game, nationalism, unity, and a private force, private force, black shirted uh, squads, private force, who were willing to use violence and then create a disturbance, come to power and use the power to settle scores with others. It means come to power legally, semi-legally, but then once you are in power, you continue to do illegal things and establish a dictatorship. But dictatorship based on an ideology that we are going to be great and be with me and we are going to create great things. And usually under these circumstances, economy improves because any preparation on war, unity, production process. So when there, when there was unemployment previously, uh, employment would pick up because more activity would be created and he would be a great leader. And it also involves a kind of a deception and propaganda, elimination of the opposition. Okay, This is the state 
that Mussolini created, which would be a template for Hitler. Tell me, what do you understand from this? What do you think are the crucial elements in this, which normally political parties don't do? Hmm? Uh, false propaganda and uh, hmm. suppressing opposition party. That's that true. happens. To, but don't you think there is something much more innovative in this? Oh, war mongering. Huh? War mongering. Okay. But uh, maybe one uh, a prime president may do that, a prime minister may do that, a prime minister may stifle opposition. But there is something more here which is primarily responsible for him to, to come to power and also which did certain things when he was in power. What is that? Private force. What is that? Private force. Private army. Paramilitary private group, which normally political parties do not have. So an armed private group pursuing politics in support of a leader. So it is they who could deliver success. They were there before, before he came to power and they are there after. Yes or no? Do you follow this? Don't you think there is some similarity with what is going on in India? What is the similarity? Pressure groups involved in hmm? violence. Hmm? Pressure groups involved in violence. What is the one which comes closest? You don't see any resemblance to India here? RSS? Exactly. RSS is this. In fact, RSS was inspired by Italian fascism. RSS people went to Italy and then learned dress code, lati, exercises, training, nationalism, unity, illegal help, demolish mask illegally and come to power and get it ratified legally, harass opponents, use institutions to check out. This is just what it is. You don't think so? Of course, ours may be much more diluted form, but we are just saying the similarity. But anyway, historically, RSS was inspired by Italian fascism. People from RSS or Hindutva groups visited Italy and inspired by his example. And then Savarkar glorified Hitler and the many RSS activists believed that uh, uh, Hitler's solution is applicable to India's solution, but here in this case, Muslims. Either you should be like majority or you have no right because the bundle has to be strong. And that is why opposition to diversity because unity is important. Only in unity strength, you should be like one. If you are not, you are a traitor. You are weakening country. Tell me, is there a similarity or you think it is my imagination? Srikar, what do you say? Sir, uh, it is not completely yeah. true, sir. 
because uh, they don't rig the elections sir and uh, uh, you, they they might influence some institutions that is uh, right thing but uh, it is highly diluted and uh, it, they are giving much scope to constitution to run also it's uh, not fine. completely true fine you dilute it but coming to rigging the elections people rig in the beginning but after that they convince the people they don't have to rig that is what uh, fascism is fascism is not something imposed on people against people's will people participate because people are convinced that that is a great project okay so mussolini rigged in the beginning but after that he didn't have to he won't have to so through legal and illegal methods they established their superiority majority that's what is meant and private paramilitary force is one important thing okay which means they can they use democratic institutions but in the end to undermine democracy Hmm. they don't use uh, lethal weapons also sir they weapons means uh, that is not a weapon just is it cannot be compared to gun that is true but now they are getting training in guns also actually in, in certain camps you know gun practice is given against muslim uh, muslims in the target muslims are placed it is like that hindu unity and then what is great india they also believe in akhand bharat pakistan bangladesh also should be a part of india one day and we were once great when was that when was that time vedic time so this is the reason why people call me the government's fascist government okay but of course we are not saying it is equal we are just looking at the elements but historically they emulated italian model it, yeah. sir it might it might be an emulation but mm-hmm. uh, the thing the things are going on Mm-hmm. is in a more democratic way also we we, we cannot uh, they ideolo- ideologically they might reach but uh, people have the sense what is wrong and right they can choose when they go to ballot but how do you know people have a sense of right and wrong when the when there is uh, no free media that is what happens haven't you seen people saying that this is much worse than emergency media doesn't have freedom so they control the close uh, voices close and some some crucial voices and check the institutions get the institutions under control judges enforcement agencies at core places core opinion leaders but remember people support in the end that is how fascism is different from dictatorship people support but people support because they are subjected to particular information management and inspirational speeches but they are not rational for example the prime minister can't face a rational interview but he can make an inspiring speech so make people yes we can make it like or somebody else is responsible okay think about it sir one question 
Sister Arand, outside, uh, like hmm. in the in those times, there wasn't uh, some global order like institution that could uh, look over what is going wrong. But now we have institutions like uh, I heard in the I read in the editorial that hmm. FATF is now going to include right wing extremism as one of the parameters to assess the country's performance. So aren't it going to reduce that, the... That is true. At the time also, people outside Italy knew what was going on, but Italians did not know. It is like that. People outside India have a very poor opinion of what is going on in India now. But Indians have a different view. That is how fascism changes. And leaders don't bother about outside opinion, though they would like to have a good opinion. What matters is who will vote, people inside. So outsiders were thinking what is going on because this rhetoric and demagoguery uh, is discussed as a problem from Plato's times. These, you know, these problems are not new. So others could see. Sir, the constitution have a need in fact. What is important, I want you to understand, is that these are popular leaders. These are not unpopular leaders. These are popular. You can watch videos. I posted three videos. You will be shocked by the popularity of these leaders, both Hitler and Mussolini. Not that they were popular in the beginning, but they became popular. They somehow came to power, checked the opposition out, manipulated information, finally delivered results. Of course, there is delivery of results, economic performance. Like that. Sir, whatever it may be, uh, they cannot go for war right now. Because they cannot uh, go for violence, which internally it's different, but they cannot go against anything. But like uh, what Hitler and Mussolini did. That is true. But it, it is a question of generating hatred. Somebody else is enemy. Somebody else is responsible. Now we are going to. Don't you think of uh, in the last elections that uh, that bombing and doing all kinds of things helped getting more votes? In Gujarat elections, Musharraf was made a almost like a opposite candidate. Anti-Pakistan pace. It is like that. So there is a kind of hatred, hatred as, as the thing, an ancient glory. Sir, hatred is true, but uh, mm -hmm. they, they, that is what, because without polarizing, any political party cannot get the votes. So that is fine. Story. Okay, fine. We made, uh, we discussed enough. Let us go to Hitler now. Okay. Hmm. Sir, uh, regarding Mussolini, hmm. Hmm. Sir, uh, um, sir, Mussolini focused on the ancient uh, Rome glory or hmm. the heart hmm. due to the Treaty of Versailles. Hmm. Uh, what was the major driving force for uh, generating the anger or the war? War time problems, discontentment. Uh, so this man channelized different classes. See, different classes are disillusioned for different reasons, but without giving any clear agenda, he say he came to represent everybody. It is like that. Okay. So there was no solution that was offered, or the only solution was to be united and make Italy stronger. Exactly, like this. Make a great uh, Italy. It is like that. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Sir, that's what we say even today. We, we glorify our past and uh, we want to go back. Mm, sure, sure. Sir, how did constitution uh, play a role in uh, avoiding this fascism in India? We will come to that. Mm. Hmm. 
Okay. Now, Hitler. Um, Hitler was born in Austria. Born in Austria. Okay. He took part in World War One. In 1920s, he took over a tiny group of National Socialist German Workers Party. Remember the socialist NSDAP called the Nazis for short. Okay. In 1923, the year is significant. He attempted a push in Munich, but failed. This one year after. Mussolini succeeded in Italy. So what Mussolini did in 22, Hitler tried in Germany in 23, but failed. He was arrested. Okay. But he used his trail to gain name. And in the end, he spent only one year in jail where he wrote Mein Kampf, which means my struggle. Okay. From 1924, Nazi movement gained in strength. And uh, few took his idea of extermination of the Jews seriously. Few means not many. Okay. But what does he stand for? Anti Versailles Treaty. Undo this. We discussed how this treaty was very hurtful. And then confiscate illicit war profits. Many rich people made uh, money and confiscate that. And some of them are Jews. But also some socialist agenda, like protect middle classes from big industries and land re redistribution to the peasants. This did not happen, of course. And anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism means anti-Jews. So Hitler's basic uh, uh, aim is to be bring back glory to Germans, create a land of pure Aryans. Okay, in that land, Jews should not be there. He held Jews as responsible for debacle in World War One. Somehow he said that these people had a conspiracy. That is why our leaders agreed for such a treaty. Okay, we don't deserve this. We did not deserve this treaty. Jewish, Jewish people are responsible. Leaders are responsible. We should get much more and we are capable of it. We should undo this treaty and create a German nation of racial purity, okay? And I would lead and you should support. That is the argument. And such talk uh, gets popularity when there are problems. It made little headway during 1925-29, where economy was doing well. See, in 1928, Nazis only got 2.6% of vote and 12 seats in Reichstag, that is German parliament. In 1928, only 2.6% vote. Collapse of economy in 1931 set the stage, if, stage for Nazi success. During that time, American aid cut off and international trade shrank and more than 25% unemployment rate. And Nazis won 107 seats in 1930, second largest, but not the largest. So nowhere to second largest. And then in 1932, single largest, but lacking majority. <laughs> okay, so they came that way. And in 1933, President Hindenburg appointed Hitler as a chancellor. Okay. One of the reasons why Hitler was appointed was Hitler was making a lot of criticism, creating noise. So once in power, 
president thought that he would behave in a more responsible way okay i remember in my class there used to be one one student who used to make a lot of noise so our teacher thought that let us make him class people leader so class people leader had to write down the numbers of the people who are indisciplined and should show to the teacher and what teacher thought worked but in this case it did not what hitler did was hitler had power and then like in the case of mussolini private paramilitary force okay and it is in fact it was with private paramilitary force he was able to create all these problems including his failed coup in 1923 his ability to pursue his opponents all mussolini's tactics okay so he came to power and what did he do after he came to power look at this over an alleged communist plot to overthrow the government introduced constitution's emergency provision he was using constitution but the ground was not true and used this provision to round up thousands of his opponents okay next in the march elections hitler called for nazis did not get simple majority okay after he came to power then all communists and some social democrats were arrested delegates to parliament were arrested as traitors then the rump parliament enacted enabling act giving the government the powers to rule by decree until the emergency had passed emergency passed elections held and then some more laws but he could get those laws because he got people of opposition parties out so it was rump parliament that passed and then all parties banned one by one groups just one second so it has various subgroups subgroups of women youth I am in the class, Andy. I'll take off five minutes. Or eight. Class. I am in the class. So, it has various subgroups for women, youth, and farmers, etc. Okay. So, this is what he did. and then um he also has to uh, deal with internal enemies okay how did he deal with the internal enemies in what is called in the light in the night of long knives in june 1934 the paramilitary storm troopers sa were cut down to side by an organization black shirts ss so there were organization two organizations sc and ss sc helped him to come to this power but some members of sc hitler felt were not loyal 
and some were threatening. So he wanted to eliminate them. Then he made a list of these SA members and uh, they were asked to come to a particular hotel on a particular day and they were simply killed by another members of another organization called black shirts ss so hitler killed around 400 to 1000 people in over 3 days of his own paramilitary force by another of his group because of which all his potential rivals or less loyal people were eliminated and uh, at that time this paramilitary group was posing problems to german army so german army was complaining about uh sa are able to see the ipad Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. It is visible. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, German army was complaining. So, in this way, he got rid of his SA. He got rid of his opponents. Um, so, he uh, he did it on the assurance that army would support him. So, he became he got control over the army and uh, that is how and uh, after uh, after some years the the president died and after that hitler became the uh, only person to head everything and by by middle of war about 1/5th of adult germans joined the nazis through some though some under pressure so gobels was a propagandist and goring was number 2 in the hierarchy and himmler head of ss okay so this is how hitler got uh, control over the situation okay tell me what observations did you make between regarding what is common between hitler and mussolini private groups is one hmm? what is that private groups is one exactly private paramilitary forces and appoint getting appointed and check out all political parties can you tell me one more one other another person who got checked out all political parties we covered him lenin so exactly lenin lenin only did that so do you see the parallels all three are totalitarian states the difference between lenin's state and these two states is that lenin is communism not russian nationalism whereas these two are narrow nationalism okay but otherwise propaganda management elimination of rivals banning political parties all things are there but in russia there is nothing like greater glory not like that focus was not on russian but of course later it became nationalist but essentially it was not russian but this is italian and german okay and then use power to to check out the opposition and there, there is some close parallel in terms of not being nowhere from uh, second largest and yet not majority and majority so that's all another thing of course that is how many political parties also come to power okay so use of extra legal and legal methods both so they use the law to to settle the scores with others okay. and then check out internal rivalry so 
Okay. Checking out murdering internal rivalry is definitely only when one one clear leader emerges, not necessarily in other cases. But in the case of uh, Hitler and Mussolini, that's what happened. And in the case of Stalin also, it's what happened. Stalin eliminated many of his family members, many of his fellow comrades. So are you also thinking of how to come to power? Okay. This is how some people came. Sir, so, hmm, hmm. sir, now we are exposed to democracy and know the value hmm. of opposition and hmm. our debate. Hmm. But by that time, the hmm. world, across the history of the world, kings hmm. killed other kings and uh, established supremacy. So was it cons was killing an uh, other party member, other party leader was considered an uh, social evil then? That is true. We that is true. It's a good question. We knew about kings killing the people of uh, other kingdoms, rivals, and things were like that. But in a democracy with people's support, manipulation of democratic institutions was something rare. The amount of it is not killing, it is about people support, majoritarianism, ganging up. All this came as a part of democracy. It was not there before. So kings used to kill, of course. These are after what we what we call democratic institutions came elections. Okay, so these developments were rare in the context of dem democracy after more in a modern period, it's in 20th century. Okay. Remember, these were going on for an ideal. It was not for personal power, not like that. Personal power is also there, but people are involved because there was an ideal in it. So reasons for violence are different in modern times. It is not that the violence is new. Violence is there, has been there. Ethnic conflict has been there, group violence has been there, but the use of modern institutions, the use of democracy, all these things to settle war discourse is something new. So we are, we are just looking at how democracies can work. Okay, this is important because we should never forget that uh, they may have come to power in a particular way, but after that they had people support till the end, extremely popular leaders, powerful speeches. They were regarded as saviors. So how so many millions adored him and how so many people could be made to think like that is an issue. So we have to see, are we immune to such influences or we are still the same? It is like that. So this violence is going on in a modern context. That's how this is different. Okay. Mm. Mm. So the following was due to the fear of the uh, leader or it was naturally because they adored him? No, there is tremendous adoration. It is not fear. Why? Because he was delivering, economy was doing well, number one. And then he was winning certain wars like that. So as long as it was going on war, his popularity was increasing. It is like that. 
and offered hope when they were hopeless. A propaganda used, manipulation is used, but in the end, remember, people were convinced. That is a different issue, which also means you can get convinced for wrong reasons when the alternatives are pushed out. These are all amazing parallels to what is going on now. It is easy to convince if you handle alternatives. So it is not because people fear. It is true some people fear here and there. But most people are convinced. But most people come to convinced because some people are made to fear. <laughs> that is how the game works. I'm giving you all the tools in case you want to be like this. You don't have to handle everybody because most people don't think independently. So just control those people who can think. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one more thing. Mm -hmm. So for the uh, Hitler and Mussolini, there were two reasons. One was the immediate reason, the war treaty. Mm -hmm. And there was a hope that we will go to the Roman Empire and whatever mm -hmm. they were. Mm -hmm. But in the current context in India, mm -hmm. so there is only one hope that uh, whatever was there in the Vedic period and all that. So mm -hmm. on, we now have only one. So No, Vedic glory was one thing, but we feel wounded regarding Kashmir, China, so many things. We have so many grouses, but without examining the causes of them. Basically, these people tell us you are wronged. That is the that is the source. You are wronged. Somebody else is a bad fellow. You are good. That is how they ignite. And okay, then you come to Hitler. The one more thing. So look at this. Okay, fine. Mm. Okay, next. Okay. Um, one agenda that is there in Hitler case, not Mussolini, is that only Hitler has anti-Jews attitudes, not Mussolini. So hatred need not be always against other nations. Hatred can be within. So to Hitler, pure German race should be there and then they should have more territory. More territory. And in that, Jews should be out. Okay. And next, how do you get these Jews out? It is here. He thought first Discriminate first. Get them into one place. And later what when one can do is an extension. Okay. So, and why this hatred is important? Because hatred-based mobilization is always used. Rule number one and most serious problem with democracy. Hate-based mobilization is always easy. A politician trying to make people wise has a more difficult task. But if he's only trying to say you are good and somebody else is bad and somebody else is responsible for your misery, becomes easily popular. And what Hitler did. 
SS operated the concentration camp that opened in 1934 in Germany and later in the conquered territories. Okay. Jews were persecuted most, but followed by Slavs. Jews were not the only people. So how did he go by them? He, Hitler first excluded them from government jobs. Nuremberg laws of 1935 prohibited marriage or sex with Jews because mixed blood people should not be born. That is the idea. Which forces them into ghettos because social contact has to be restricted. Okay. And Nuremberg laws, which were first passed in the case of Jews, later extended to gypsies people of African descent, even those mentally retarded are with physical defects, though they are German or young. Because Hitler is interested in creating a pure and competent German race. So he wanted to get, get out, get the others out. And then he said, from 1938, Jews cannot emigrate unless all property is surrendered. Okay. But what is happening is that as Hitler was expanding his uh, country into more, getting more and more territories, he was adding more Jews also. Because Jews were there in many neighboring uh, countries. So they discussed in terms of what to do with this Jewish problem. What to do with the Jewish problem. Okay, that's called a Jewish problem. And then they thought of what is called final solution to the Jewish problem, which was approved in 1942. That was to send them from ghettos to death camps in Poland. Get rid of them to gas them, to kill and burn. Okay. In that way, by 1945, 6 million Jews were killed. And only a few tens of thousands of 2 million Jews in Germany of 1933 survived. So how did they get 6 million? Because from conquered territories. So whatever he conquered, he was identifying Jews and sending them to death camps because he wanted to have only for Germans all these territories. Okay. So to the question why people were tolerant, first is that not many, I mean, many do not know what was going on. That is one. And also, remember, uh, majority doesn't think about the minority. Okay. If it is affecting them, they will think. So they thought we are not Jews. Only Jews should fear Hitler. So the point here is discrimination, exclusion, okay, separate treatment, and unleash violence. Okay. Tell me, is there some similarity? That's what it is. Depriving citizenship. Putting them in, in uh, detention centers. That is going on in Assam. Detention centers for months and years. Ghettoization. And once they are discriminated at one place, vulnerable for rioting. People who have studied Holocaust wrote that this is the first stage in term before uh, major violence. Discrimination, 
लॉस ऑफ सिटीजनशिप राइट्स एंड घेटोइजेशन तो माना रहता है officials were given targets in terms of excluding muslims as citizens and do you see no political party can challenge what bjp is doing why because they will lose votes he will say so you are a pro muslim party no party wants to be called a pro muslim party a fraction of what is going on to muslims is done to hindus will be very very big issue so they read in assam and they want to do it all over india so essentially isolate identify tag separate and then make them vulnerable to violence and this did not dent hitler's popularity that is the point i want you to watch those videos you will be shocked by the popularity you nobody can say that is all stage managed no it is not it is not stage managed they didn't do it out of fear they loved him till he lost, till he came to the collapsing point why both hitler and mussolini mussolini what they did was economic performance out of this activity is created people have jobs confidence were going to be something so when somebody tells you for preparing for civil service you can make it you get inspired right that is how they inspired the nation people loved it so let us see what happened in the end okay see his target was to first undo versailles treaty okay in 1933 germany got out of league 1933 in 1935 versailles treaty renounced formally and started conscription for a larger army in violation of the Treaty. and next air force creation okay next 1936 small force was sent to rhineland which was supposed to be demilitarized you know german military generals were scared what would happen if military was sent to rhineland they were afraid that maybe france would invade and britain would invade but they did not invade and that showed that hitler can take a gamble and he can win that is how hitler established his leadership when others people around him were fearing hitler would take a risk he would gamble there was absolutely no doubt about that man's courage courage defined in this way so german army was scared but hitler did it next in 19 so this was one huge step in 
Austria joins Germany. Volent treaty prohibits its joining. Joining is unsure. It's called in German. See, Germans, though Austria was German speaking, it was prohibited from joining because Germany was not supposed to be bigger than what it was. In fact, territory and population was of Germany was lost to others. But then Hitler earned it. Austria was willing to join. So when Hitler and his troops went, they welcomed him. And you know, Hitler was born in Austria because they wanted to be part of a emerging German power. So that is a popular step. And next, little risky. There were some Germans in Czechoslovakia. They were called Sudeten Germans. They were made to agitate against the government. Germans complaining, and so that Hitler would say, "See, these Germans were being ill-treated, and they should be a part of Germany." And do you know? France and uh, Britain had to agree for that. In 1938 September, in Munich, Chamberlain, British Prime Minister, Eduardo Daladia, this is French Premier, and Mussolini and Hitler met, and they allowed part of Czechoslovakia to go to Germany. That is Zex sacrificed, though France had a defense pact with it along with Poland and R Romania. France had a defense pact with these countries, but still they thought, why invite war with Germany? So basically, Germany was getting ready to fight, and other countries were not willing. That is the game. So Austria accepted, Rhineland accepted, militarization accepted, Air Force accepted. Uh, Czechoslovakia was sacrificed. It means that part of Czechoslovakia where Germans were there would be a part of Germany. Uh, so it was called appeasement policy, trying to appease uh, Hitler. But basically because they were not ready for war. And uh, it is at this point, one very important uh, thing happened. Stalin was willing to help uh, um, allies. Okay, Stalin was willing to help France and Britain that don't give up on Czechoslovakia, we'll fight. But these people did not take Stalin's help. And then only after six months, Hitler moved to get the remaining Czechoslovakia. So part of Czechoslovakia where Germans were there, these people have agreed, signed, but Hitler moved beyond just after six months, after signing peace. And then in 1939, in March, Britain signed a pact with Poland guaranteeing British and French aid if attacked. So Poland was the next. And then on August 23rd, what Hitler did was a non-aggression pact was signed with Stalin. The agreement is if he stayed neutral, Stalin would get three Baltic states and parts of Poland and Romania, which once belonged to Russia. You know, some territories were given to Russia uh, during World War I, and uh, they would be given from Russia, taken from Russia, and now they would be given back. That was the agreement with Stalin. So that Stalin won't attack Hitler. So after signing non-aggression pact with Russia, then Stalin, uh, Hitler launches on September 1, 1939, German blitzkrieg, which is called Lightning War, and smashed into Poland. And this is considered the beginning of Second World War. So that's how the war started. <clears throat> so one after the other, um, army increase, Air Force, Rhineland, and Austria, 
and Rex Slovakia, and then in the end, Poland. Okay, so by then, others felt now there is, they can't see, see the ideal and they had to fight and take on. So, September 1, 1939 is regarded as the start of the World War II. Okay, so tell me, what do you make of it? Sir, uh, global treaties, hmm. uh, the, uh, global treaties can be violated when uh, power equates, power variables change, and uh, and the rest of the players do remain silent. Hmm. That is true. That is what he did. But it is not that uh, he violated, and so it is immoral thing. He, it is about uh, the risk he was taking. The risk was he was taking and the other players were, were silent till the last minute because they didn't want to, they didn't want another war. So World War I may have many complex reasons, but World War II has no complex reasons. It is one man who wanted war and though nobody else wanted. And it was Hitler. <laughs> People tried their best. So, so, so adamant all, uh, exactly fight. what all they could have done was to start much early so what they thought thinking that this fellow would do why should we start so maybe this treaty is unfair and maybe he would do, undo the treaty and uh, stay calm that is also possible then why invite war now Okay. So that was the thinking. Basically, the world is helpless. World War I may be stupidity, many other reasons, but World War II, it could not have been stopped. How? how I mean, nobody wanted a war, but Hitler wanted it. Okay. So was it for the delivery of promise? Essentially, you will see the mad gap. It is a suicidal mission. It, he will run, run till he commits suicide. It is like that. He was mad gap, but what is he of importance is not why he is mad and what kind of a person is. That how could people elect him and trust him? Because in a country, all kinds of people exist. But why should uh, be he be elected? 